Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about fundamentals and how we got to kind of hold on to them in the room because the dimensions of the room <laughs> don't want us to. They want to create distortion. So we want to kind of hold on to them through treatment and we're going to talk about the process. So hopefully we can get more understanding about it. What prompted this video is I, I've been getting a lot of calls from people that are buying products that are filled with building insulation. And they're just not happy because my first question to them after they tell me all that they've done is, well, why are you calling me? You just spent seven, eight thousand dollars on boxes filled with building insulation. You should have problem solved, 100 percent fixed, 100 percent right. But they're calling me. You know what they all say? Something's missing. They don't know what, but they're just not happy. Well, they're not happy because it's the wrong rate and level of absorption. And they, they know that. Instinctively, they know that. It doesn't sound like music. It doesn't sound like voice. So they don't know why. And they don't know the reason, you know, for it. And they want it. So I guess that's why they're calling. Low frequency fundamentals produce low frequency room modes. We know what room modes are. Unwanted pressure between two surface areas, four surface areas, and six surface areas. We don't want it. It's distortion. Basically, the 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 hertz wavelength won't fit in the room. That's the easiest way to think about it. 40 hertz, what, 28 feet? Who has 28 foot rooms? So if it doesn't fit, let's just, in our minds, think distortion or think room modes. That's what it is. When we were testing rooms, when we were first doing our R&D, I tested a lot of rooms that I had built. And the smallest size, 10, 10, 8, the biggest size, 40, 20, 40, something in there. I can't remember. It's been years. But I kept seeing these two problematic areas. In 99% of the rooms, 30 to 50, 30 to 300. This was the big elephant. This, these 30, 40, 50 cycles had the most problems. You could almost even extend to 60. 30 to 60 had the most problems. But 30 to 50 were always peaks in response. So, you know, we have a response curve, but they were always this up here. And then, you know, everything else slides down. But they were always, you know, this 30, 40, 50 peaks below 100. So this prompted the design for the ACDA-12, which is 30 to 50, and the ACDA-10, which is 30 to 300, more broadband, okay? So we must treat all the pressure issues with pressure technology. So if we're going after these low frequency ranges, we have to have a technology that works in that low frequency range. And boxes filled with building insulation simply cannot. They might be able to go down to 40 hertz, but they never get enough. It always leaves you wanting more, as evidenced by all these calls I've been getting. So what do we got to be able to do with the treatment? We got to hold the fundamental. When that 40 cycle wave is generated by, let's say, the subwoofer and goes out 28 feet, the job of the treatment in the room is to manage the pressure that that's going to create in cycles, right? To manage the pressure, to hold on to the pressure, to absorb enough of that energy from 30 to 50 in the case of the ACDA-12, absorb enough of that energy that we have a chance to uh, hear the harmonics. Okay, we want to be able to hear the harmonics. That's what we want. We want to hear that wavelength live and die on its own volition without the impact of the room. Well, so we get no room basically is how you have to do it. If you go to a live event that's big, you don't have those issues in the low end. Their issue is providing enough output to, to fill the room. Our issue in small room acoustics is too much output in the room period it's too small almost all the time. So you must be able to so absorb large amounts of energy per square foot of the product. And only diaphragmatic can do that. It's the most powerful of membrane and Helmholtz. 
So you have to use diaphragmatic. There's just no other way that science has shown us yet, okay? Look at the performance of the ACDA 12 and the 10. Look at 30, 40, 50, 30, 35 percent, 40, 63 percent, 50, 100 percent. So back to this problem area here that we saw in all rooms, huge sponge for that area. The 10 is more broadband with about 25% absorption per octave from 30 to octave band from 30 to 300. So you get two kinds of sponges. You get a big one for the really low peaks and then you get more of a broadband broadband to help with the transition. So that's the goal and the impetus behind the two products. So the diaphragmatic absorbers Pound for pound, square foot for square foot, you can't beat it. It's just the most powerful of all of them. So we got to have something that holds the fundamental, metaphorically, to, you know, make sure that the harmonic can go and live in the room properly without being overwhelmed by the fundamental. Fundamental hold. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.